Imagine holding a piece of rock in your hand that's older than the ground you're standing on, older than the mountains, older than the oceans, older, in fact, than the very star that gives us light and warmth. That's what just passed through our solar system, and we almost missed it. A new study published in December 2025 has confirmed something that honestly takes your breath away when you really think about it. Three, I Atlas, the interstellar visitor that captivated astronomers for six months, is at least 7.6 billion years old. Our sun, it's 4.6 billion years old. Our entire solar system, Earth included, is younger than this cosmic traveler by 3 billion years. Let that sink in for a moment. When this object first formed around a distant star, our sun didn't exist yet. The planets weren't here. Nothing we know, nothing we've ever touched or seen had come into being. Before I show you what this age really means and where this ancient wanderer actually came from, I want to know who's watching. Where are you joining me from today? Are you in California watching with your morning coffee? Florida in the afternoon? Maybe you're in the Midwest settling in for the evening? Drop a comment and let me know your location. I genuinely appreciate knowing where my audience is. And if you find this story as profound as I do, please hit that subscribe button. We're living through a rare moment in human history, one where we can actually study material from another star system, and I don't want you to miss what we're learning. Now, let me walk you through how scientists figured out this object's true age and why it matters so deeply. The first question you might ask is this, how can astronomers possibly know how old something is when it's millions of miles away and we can't touch it? The answer lies in motion. Not motion through space right now, but motion through time, recorded in velocity. When 3i Atlas entered our solar system, it was moving at 57.99 kilometers per second relative to the sun. That's about 130,000 miles per hour. But it's not just the speed that matters. It's the direction. The object's velocity can be broken down into three components in what astronomers call the galactic coordinate system. Think of it like giving directions in three dimensions. How fast toward the center of the galaxy, how fast around the galaxy in rotation, and how fast up or down through the flat disk where most stars live. For 3i Atlas, those numbers are u equals negative 51 kilometers per second, v equals negative 19.2 kilometers per second, and w equals positive 18.5 kilometers per second. Now, that W number, the vertical velocity, that's the key. 18.5 kilometers per second straight up through the galactic plane is unusually high. You see, our galaxy is like a spinning disk. Most stars orbit the center in roughly the same flat plane. Young stars, born recently, move smoothly within that disk with low vertical velocities. Old stars born when the galaxy was younger and more chaotic have much higher vertical velocities they bob up and down through the plane as they orbit. Researchers at the University of Canterbury in New Zealand, working with colleagues at Oxford University, developed what they call the Otautahi Oxford Interstellar Object Population Model. It's a sophisticated framework that uses data from the Gaia satellite, which has measured the positions and velocities of over 1 billion stars in our galaxy. When they plugged in 3i Atlas's velocity profile, the model produced an age estimate. The most likely range, between 7.6 and 14 billion years old. The upper end of that range, 14 billion years, would mean this object formed when the universe itself was less than a billion years old. That's almost incomprehensible. Even the lower estimate, 7.6 billion years, predates our entire solar system by three billion years. Age alone is fascinating. But it's what that age tells us about where 3i Atlas came from that really changes our perspective. Our Milky Way galaxy isn't uniform. It has structure, different populations of stars with different ages and different chemistries. The thin disk is where most of the action is. Young stars, newly formed from recent gas clouds, orbit smoothly in a relatively flat plane. These stars are metal rich, meaning they contain higher amounts of elements heavier than hydrogen and helium. Our sun belongs to this population. The thick disk is different. It's populated by much older stars that formed when the galaxy itself was young. 
these stars have lower metallicity because they were born before the galaxy had time to enrich itself with heavy elements from generations of supernovae. And they have higher vertical velocities bobbing up and down through the galactic plane. Three I Atlas's velocity profile places it firmly in the thick disk population. This is the first interstellar object we've confirmed came from that ancient stellar group. What does that mean practically? It means 3i Atlas formed in a fundamentally different environment than anything in our solar system. The protoplanetary disk, where it condensed from gas and dust, had less iron, less silicon, less of all the heavy elements we take for granted. It was dominated by lighter elements, hydrogen, helium, carbon, oxygen, and nitrogen. In that kind of environment, water ice becomes one of the most important solid forming materials beyond the ice line, where temperatures are cold enough for it to freeze. Recent observations showing that 3i Atlas is rich in carbon dioxide and water compounds fit perfectly with this origin story. It's carrying the chemistry of an ancient metal poor star system. Here's what moves me about this discovery, and I hope it moves you too. We're not just looking at an old object. We're looking at a time capsule, a frozen sample of the galaxy as it existed billions of years before our solar system formed, when 3i Atlas condensed from the disk around its parent star, the Milky Way looked different. Fewer stars, fewer metals. The spiral arms were in different positions. The galaxy itself was younger, more chaotic, still settling into its current structure. And this small chunk of ice and rock barely a kilometer wide has carried that ancient chemistry through the darkness of space for billions of years. Think about the journey. At some point, Gravitational interactions ejected it from its birth system. Maybe a close encounter with a giant planet. Maybe the parent star had a companion that disturbed the outer regions of the system. Maybe the star itself went supernova, blasting material into interstellar space. However it happened, 3i Atlas was set free. It drifted through the galaxy, passing near other stars feeling the gentle pull of the galaxy's gravity, slowly moving up and down through the disk. For billions of years, it traveled alone in the cold and the dark. Temperatures barely above absolute zero. No sunlight, no warmth, just the faint glow of distant stars and the cosmic microwave background radiation left over from the Big Bang. And then in July, 2025, it happened to pass through our neighborhood. Our telescopes caught it, we studied it, and now we know its story. The age of three I Atlas has profound implications for the search for life elsewhere in the galaxy. If objects from seven to one, four billion year old star systems are passing through our solar system, that means those ancient systems had planets. They had the raw materials to form rocky worlds and icy bodies. Some of those systems have been dead for billions of years. Their stars burned out, exploded, or faded into white dwarfs or neutron stars. The planets are gone or frozen husks, but during their active lifetimes, those systems may have had habitable zones. They may have had liquid water on rocky planets. And if life arose in any of those systems, it would have had a three billion year head start on us. Think about that. Life on Earth is perhaps 3.8 billion years old. Humans have existed for a few hundred thousand years. Civilization, as we know it, is maybe 10,000 years old. If life began in one of those ancient thick disk systems just a billion years before it began on Earth, that civilization would have had a billion extra years to evolve, to develop technology, to spread. What could a billion year old civilization accomplish? I don't know the answer, nobody does. But objects like 3i Atlas remind us that the galaxy is ancient, far older than our solar system, and that the building blocks for life have been present for most of that time. One of the most frustrating aspects of studying 3i Atlas is that we can only observe it from a distance. We can't send a spacecraft to intercept it. It's moving too fast, and we detected it too late to mount a mission. But there's a possibility that excites me, and I want to share it with you. 3i Atlas shed material as it passed through the inner solar system. Dust particles, small pebbles, fragments of ice, some of that material is now drifting in orbits that occasionally cross Earth's path. Not the comet itself, but the debris trail it left behind. In the coming years, some of those particles may enter Earth's atmosphere. Most will burn up as meteors. 
but some, the larger fragments, might survive and reach the ground as meteorites. If we can find and analyze even one confirmed fragment from 3i Atlas, we'll have a physical sample of material from a 7 to 1 4 billion year old star system. We'll be able to measure isotope ratios that reveal the nucleosynthetic processes in its parent star. We'll see mineral structures formed in a metal-poor protoplanetary disk. We may even find organic molecules preserved from an era before our sun existed. That would be scientific treasure beyond measure. The Old Taltahi Oxford model that determined 3i Atlas's age isn't just about one object. It's about understanding the entire population of interstellar visitors. The model predicts that the galaxy is constantly exchanging material between star systems. Planets form. Gravitational interactions eject some of that material. And those objects drift through space until they encounter another system. This process has been happening for billions of years. Every star system, including ours, is surrounded by a sparse cloud of interstellar objects that originated elsewhere. Most are too small or too faint for us to detect. But they're there. Chunks of rock and ice from dead systems, from living systems light years away, all drifting silently through the darkness. 3i Atlas is just the one we happened to catch. We've detected three interstellar visitors in eight years, but the model suggests there are trillions of these objects passing through the galaxy at any given time. With better telescopes coming online and surveys designed specifically to catch fast-moving objects on hyperbolic trajectories, we're gonna find more. And each one will be a sample from a different time, a different place, a different stellar environment. Each one will teach us something new about how planetary systems form, how they evolve, and how common the ingredients for life really are. As I record this, 3i Atlas is already fading from view. It's more than 300 million kilometers from Earth now, moving outward at nearly 60 kilometers per second. By mid-2026, it'll be too faint for most telescopes to track. But what it taught us will last far longer. We learned that we live in a galaxy filled with ancient travelers. We learned that the chemistry of life is universal, formed in protoplanetary disks across billions of years. We learned that matter cycles through the galaxy from star to star, carrying information about cosmic history. And we learned something profound about our place and time. We're late comers. The universe is 13.8 billion years old. Our solar system is only 4.6 billion years old. For 9 billion years before we existed, the galaxy was forming stars, building planets, and perhaps nurturing life. 3i Atlas is a messenger from that earlier era, a traveler from the ancient thick disk passing through our young solar system, reminding us that we're part of a story far larger and far older than we usually comprehend. I find that both humbling and inspiring, and I hope you do too. Before I sign off, thank you for being here and taking this journey with me. Let me know in the comments where you're watching from and what this ancient visitor means to you. If you found this meaningful, please subscribe. The universe is still revealing its secrets, and I wanna share them with you as we discover them together. Thanks for watching. And remember, when you look up at the night sky, you're looking at a galaxy that's been telling stories for 13 billion years. We're just now learning to listen.